And I believe by now you still remember what morphology is. So we can try to say morphology is the level of linguistic uh, study concerned with the internal structure of words and rules of uh, word formation. It is concerned with the study of rules governing the information of words in human language. Also, it is derived from Greek word, which is morph meaning words and ology referring to the study. So I believe you, you do know those kind of studies. Everything that have ology, it's some kind of study. So here we are focusing on the study of, um, of words to which we will be focusing on the roles of the words. Let me try to accept someone. All right. So this one, I believe my colleague, he did emphasize too, uh, so much in terms of morphology. So now let's uh, try to talk about a morpheme, to which we said a morpheme refers to a minimum unit form of uh, meaning or grammatical form. So here we're talking about those small and piece of words to which we use them to attach to a word in order for them to make a particular meaning. So we are focusing on um, uh, those words like an, uh, able, uh, say for example, unhappy, an, which is un, is the morpheme. So we are using those words, we are attaching those words. Here we are focusing on how we cut the words like we might be having a word which is a full formed word, but then that word is being cut into smaller inner pieces. And when we have to reconstruct those pieces, then we'll be having a full constructed word that makes a meaning. So my colleague talked about this one, and um, I believe it makes sense when we, to, we try to explain it. So again, this one is just, we're just, uh, going through what uh, you guys did, and then we'll be uh, focusing on the new things that we did not do. So I believe, again, we talked about the, we have uh, different types of morphemes, which is one morpheme. A morpheme, uh, this one we can say it's a morpheme, a boy, desire, it's one morpheme, it have one morpheme, and then the one that have two morphemes, it's a uh, boyish, desirable. So we, you can see that here we added another morpheme. That is why we're saying we have two morphemes. We added ish, which is uh, a, it's a suffix. We'll be talking about the suffix and the prefix. So these ones, we can treat them as uh, affix. But then we'll be talking a lot about the uh, prefix and uh, suffix. So. Here we added a suffix, which is ish to me, to make it a boy, to make it, um, maybe we, we are trying to modify a meaning in terms of boy, then it's boyish. Then we have desire, which is, we added a suffix to make it desirable. So it means that here, if we can count, we'll be having two morphemes that are, that have a particular meaning. Then again, if we say we have three morphemes, we'll be talking about boyishness. You can see that we have the first one, which is boy. Let me try to cut it. All right. Uh, okay, we have boy, number one. We have ish, which is, uh, yes, we have ish, then we have ness. Then it means that we have boyishness. Then again, we have desirability. Here you can see that we have desire, number one, plus able, plus et, then we have three morphemes. So by so doing, we can say that um, the morphemes are able to be attached in a particular way to modify the meaning, to change. At some point, we can change the meaning. At some point, we can modify a meaning, or it can give us a different, uh, different thing. So this is the... If we follow this kind of rules of uh, morphology, then we'll be able to construct new words and be able to construct some ways that we 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 we, we are we might think of, and we'll be making sense of those words. So, if we say here we have four morphemes, like we have different types of morphemes, 
depending on how you add words and so on and so on. So I can move on. Can do we have those who need clarity? If you don't understand that part, please ask a question in the message box so that I can. Okay. So there's a question from Appreciate Mbombi saying, so uh, we can say morphemes have no meaning on their own. No, some morphemes, they have meanings on their own. We have a boy, a boy we know that it has meaning. We have, we are going to talk about the uh, bound morphemes and those other, which are uh, morphemes that cannot stand on their own. And we have other morphemes that can stand on their own. Um, I believe your question is answered. So we will be talking about those morphemes when time goes. And I believe that we'll be together for quite a little, for a little longer, because we'll be trying to explain uh, them to make sense, because it's very much important for you to understand this, because they might be set in your test and you need to understand them and know them. Um, okay. Kumoto says that, can you please address affixes using those examples, especially the infixes? Okay, we will uh, move forward to them. Now it's just an introduction because I believe that you, you did those kind of things with my colleague, but then we'll be focusing to them when like this, um, this uh, slide that I'll be focusing on in terms of the affixes and the uh, infixes. Thank you for your questions, guys. Let me try to move to those questions that you did ask. So let's try to check these ones. Okay. Uh, let me not confuse you with these ones. We'll just go through them. Okay. From what we did to that uh, fourth slide, we, we, we talked about different types of morphine, morphemes whereby we we need to um to be in a position to count the morphemes that we are having so here is the sentence that we are given here and this sentence it have um different types of morphemes and we need to count them so in order for us to count them i will need uh i think it will take time so i will just have to do it for you the answer here we have 11 morphemes. So how do we identify the morphemes that we have? Now we are coming back to the, I'm answering the question of, uh, I let me check, the question of uh, appreciate. Appreciate as the if uh, the morphemes cannot, they do not have meanings on their own. So here to answer to that, if you can see, um, okay, here we, we don't have a morpheme that is standing on its own, but then we will have some other examples there. So let me try to uh, count the morphemes for you. We have everyone enjoys teaching hardworking students, right? Everyone enjoys teaching hardworking students. It's a sentence that is fully constructed. And in order for us to identify the morphemes that are in this sentence, we need to be in a position to know those morphemes what are they then the first mo uh, morpheme that we have we have every which is the first one i hope i'm not wasting much of your time guys because i'm trying to make it make sense to you then uh okay another color okay let me try to do this uh -huh. everyone enjoy it's a morpheme and then it's another morpheme so to answer a question of uh, appreciate we can say we have morphemes that that make sense on their own and the morphemes that cannot that that cannot make sense if they are not attached to another uh, morpheme so if you can see the first one everyone can make sense on its own one it's it can make sense okay and then enjoy it makes sense then it doesn't make sense on its own it need to be attached to another morpheme in order for it to make sense then let me uh add 
we have had and then work okay uh let me uh, okay let me do this and then oh i ruined it okay we have work let me make it a board and then in okay student fine i'm sorry for this guys but i'm trying to make these things make sense to you because you need to understand what we're talking about and i believe i'll be wasting much of your time but you need to understand what we're really talking about when you talk about the morphemes because we have morphemes that may that can stand on their own which are called free morphemes so these ones, if you can check, this one is, is a free morpheme. This one is a free morpheme. All that are in yellow. If you can see those that I... Okay, let me try to accept someone first. I'm sorry for that. Okay. Appreciate you said free morphemes, bound morpheme. Now I remember. Of course, we're talking about the free morphemes and the bound morphemes. Uh, my colleague, he talked about this one. So... Now let's try to talk about this one. We have free morphemes, we have a, a bound morphemes. So this one is a free morpheme, and this one it's it's a free morpheme, but it's connected to the uh, other morpheme to make to modify a meaning. Then we have a free morpheme. This one. Let's say let's try to make it like to say it like this. All those ones that are in red are written in red. They are all. Um, bound morphemes and these ones that are having yellow color they are um uh, uh, free morphemes and if you can see check this one also it's a uh free morpheme just like that so i believe your answer appreciate is un your question has been answered then just like that so if we count these morphemes that we have in this sentence, let's start. Let's let, let's start counting with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have eleven morphemes in the sentence. So you need to be in a position to be uh, to identify the morphemes that you have. Say, for example, if you are given some kind of uh, uh, test or a work or an exercise that you need to um to do then they might ask you to identify the morphemes that you see then you need to be in, in a position to cut the words modify them knowing how many morphemes that you have in a particular word from a word you'll be having a phrase from a phrase a sentence i believe that process we covered it you know it so let's try to talk about the free morphemes my colleague emphasized this one in the uh last session you talked about the free morphemes where we said we have free morphemes that can stand on its own and have meaning so we have school student boy child lecture we talked about it and then we have uh, most of free morphemes are content or lexical with because they usually carry meaning we talked about this one that a, a morpheme a free morpheme can stand on its own and it also having its own meaning now bound morphemes we emphasize them in our exercise previous exercise whereby we talked about the uh they they are the morphemes that cannot uh, stand on their own and have meaning they attach to a free morpheme to add meaning so we are saying that in order for us to have a a, a, um, a morpheme that had, I mean, in order for us to have a, a full, a fully meaning uh, morpheme, we need to add those um, uh, bound morphemes. But if they are just alone, they will not make sense. You, they, they, they can't make sense on their own. So we need to make sure that we attach them to other morphemes in order for them to make sense. So if you can check the examples that we have here, we have meant, and in, ed, nest, full. So for us to um, find, for us to use these ones, we need to find another morpheme, which is a free morpheme to attach to attach to it, so that we can 
have a full meaning for the uh, particular word. Say, for example, we have li, that one, the last one. If we can attach it to grammatical, then we'll be having grammatically. And then um, if we can check an, if we add it to change, it will be unchanged. And then if we add ed, it will be unchanged. I believe it makes sense for now. And I'll be checking the questions in the uh, question box so that we can move on. Do we have those who have questions? If you have a question, you can open your mic or you can write in the book so that we can move on. If you don't have, then I can freely move on. It will be clear that you do understand this part we are into. Can we move on? Can somebody answer? Wow. Am I talking alone? Guys, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, thanks. Thank, thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay, let me try to proceed. Mm, I believe this part, you do understand it. And my colleague did a very good work. He did uh, emphasize this part too much. So we are just going to continue with what we did. All right. I think I see a question. Someone is asking, okay, it's my colleague. My colleague is saying that those who just joined, you may please send your details, send them initials and student number right here on Google Meet. Not if you have already sent your details, please do not resend them. Please, those who just joined us, send your details so that we can know how many uh, uh, mentees who joined. We are going to use this information to, um, to uh, write a report to, so that we can send it to our officials. It's very important. So let's let's try to proceed uh, from where we left. So someone was asking me was asking us to um, emphasize the part of the affixes and the suffixes. I believe you did it with my colleague, but then it's important for you to recall what you did. So we are talking. We say that the affix is the it's a bound morpheme that is attached to the stem, either a, at the beginning or at the end of a word. So we're talking about the. Um, remember, we talked about the morphemes. It doesn't matter if it's a free morpheme or a, a, a bound morpheme. Here we're talking about those. Um, those morphemes that we can attach, it's either we attach them uh, at the first or we attach, we attach them at the end of the word. But then the most important thing, we need, we'll be focusing on those um, ways that we do attach. So here, the affix, affix covers the two, there's, uh, there are two categories that falls under affix, which is the prefix and the suffix. So the prefix, is the one that uh, is is the pre one. Like if you can, if if you do understand pre, it means is the first one that are the the are the morphemes that are being attached at the um, like they are the ones that are being attached uh, before the word. Then the suffix are attached after the word. So that's the definition of affix. Say for example, if you are being uh, asked to define affix, then let's talk about the suffix. The suffix are the um, are the bound morphemes which occur after the root or a stem of a word. I believe you know those kind of things, a root, what is the root, what is the stem, and all those kind of things. So yeah. Then we're talking about the suffix. Suffix are the bound morphemes that are attached at the, like, um, after the root of the stem. Let's talk about this one with a sing. And I believe you still remember how to um, differentiate the morphemes, like how to count the morphemes. The first example, it have um, two morphemes. Let's see the second one. It have again two. It's a uh, yeah, linguist. Okay, and then we have novelisti. So it means that we have east. There are two morphemes with east. Okay, lingui. Here it must supposed to be lingua, then it's a linguist. Then we have another. So these ones were only attaching at the end of a morpheme. 
So attaching these ones, it makes sense to us seeing her just like that. So the suffix is here are the suffix that we've been attaching at the end of the word of the uh, root or a stem of a word. So our word, the first word that we have with is we've seen, then at the end we, we've attached a suffix which gives us seeing uh, then the meaning changed at some point. Linguist is supposed to be um, lingual. Then we added east in order for us to uh, to change a, a meaning. Then novel, it was supposed to be a novel, which is our road that we have here. Then we've attached east, which is which gave us a novelist. Then friend, it was friend. Our stem is a friend. Then we've attached l in order for us to have friendly. So it's important for you to understand and know where is the um, where are the suffix and where are the prefix. So our suffixes are the on they are only attached after the stem and the prefix. We said they are attached before the um, the stem of the word. So. I believe by uh, by having to explain the suffix, we also have clear understanding on how to uh, define the prefix because the prefix are the one that comes the uh, uh, before they are pre. It means that they are the first one. They are at the beginning of the word. So we have uh, premature disappointment. So this one's the first ones which are here. They are the prefixes these prefixes uh, okay just like this i believe by now you have a clear understanding on how to identify these ones so um by so doing i believe we can move on from these ones because we still have a lot of things to cover uh okay let me try to check questions if we have those who need clarity okay we don't have questions it's fine Uh, now let's talk about the infix we have been talking. Um, the infix is the uh, bond morphem which is inserted in the middle of a word or a stem. And then um, these the examples of the infix are here. Figure strong and then to be strong. Okay. So as you can see, the fixes, the infix are inserted in between of the words. If you can check these ones, the examples that we are having here, then I, I think I will need to uh, look for examples that make sense because these ones, they, they, you, you, you'll never understand them like clearly so. So we'll try to um, give you good examples of the prefix, uh, the infixes. And I believe my colleague will just, uh, if he finds something, he will send them in the WhatsApp group. Let's try to focus on the, all right. I'm still admitting people, so please. Uh, okay. So now, Let's uh, focus on the word formation. I believe this these ones you didn't do them with my colleagues. So let's try to focus on them. We're saying the word formation. Uh, word formation is the process in linguistics refers to the study of process whereby new words come into being in a language. This process has been there for years ago in uh, in language, and it's still there, and it will be there for years to come. So. By weight formation, we'll be talking about the borrowing, uh, compounding, and all those kind of stuff. So let's let's check them with borrowing, with compound compound words, which is uh, compounding, with acronyms, with blending and clipping. You need to know how to uh, to to combine these words, how to work on them, the blending ones, the borrowing, and all and all the stuff. So let's try to focus on the first one, which is the borrowing. 
So we're saying that borrowing is, the borrowing is the term which refers to adoption of a linguistic expression from one language, usually when there is no term existing for the new object or state of affairs. Uh, it's a definition that is being quoted from someone. So, for example, if we let's say, for example, we have a word in a particular language that we uh, that doesn't have a translation equivalent. So what we do is to write that way this, the way it is, but then we have to write it in our own language. So for example, that the example that we have here, we have peel from English. Then in Northern Sutu, we can say pilisi. Uh, let's check if, if I manage to admit someone. Okay, there are people that I need to admit. Whoa. I think it's refusing to give me an option to admit. So far, are we still together? Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Hey, colleague. <laughs> This, uh, this laptop of mine is giving me a problem because I'm feeling, okay, now I can um, I can admit them. Okay, thank God. Uh, I believe they will be admitted uh, when time goes. So fine, let's, uh, let's, let's move on. So we're saying borrowing. Borrowing, it's, uh, <laughs> we can say we are borrowing, but at some point, we, we are no longer retaining those ways that we borrow. That's the main concern that we are having in African languages. Because we do borrow words that we are going to use. And those words, they actually have, they are being influenced by technology. Let's say, for example, there are new things that are being developed. Uh, things like uh, laptops, uh, cell phones, which differ with different names. And those names, when they have to give that thing a name, then we tend to use that name as it is. And then we are using those names in our own languages, our own home languages. So that is uh, the part of borrowing. That's where the part of borrowing comes in. So we have this first one, which is the peel. It's a good example because if we can check in Northern Sutu, it's called a p a p l e c then um you can also give example in your own languages so um again we have cliniki which is uh from english to northern sea northern so too is called cliniki and then other examples will be have to be um given in your own languages and i believe you have these examples in your own languages and it's very important for you to be in a position to define to give your own examples say for example if you are being asked to define borrowing um in a test you need to be in a position to define what is borrowing and you need to give an example and when you give examples you need to make uh, to make it a, a point that you give example in terms of your own language, your own home language. So there are some, there are many ways that we are borrowing from other from other languages and we are failing to retain them. And um, other words, let's say carbon, you can see that in Northern Sutu it's carbon, something like that. And then cholera, it's also cholera, something like that. So we are just borrowing words and write them in our own languages, but then that word, it's still the same way we just write them in our own language that is what uh, borrowing all about then we have compounding a uh, compounding we're saying that compounding involves the adding of two stems together to form a a new word or one word so according to this guy uh, blake and moorhead they are saying a compounding is a process of forming a word by combining two or more exiting words so by so doing, when we combine, when we talk about compounding, we're talking about having to find a word on its own. Remember, we talked about the free morphemes. It's like we are finding our own uh, our own free morphemes that we can combine, and that free morpheme, when we combine it, it's going to give us a new meaning, and it will be a new word just like that. So it means that we can find. Um, let me just go to the uh, to the example so you understand what we're talking about. So here we are, we'll be focusing on the free morphemes that we can combine to 
uh, give us a new word. And those and take note in the compounding. By compounding, what we are combining the the words that have different meanings and they don't follow under the same category. It's like you are just picking new word from another, um, like in different lexical lexical terms. And those words, when we combine them, will be having a new word that is having a way different meaning from those words. Let's check the examples that we have there. We have text and book. When we combine the two, you know text, it means something else. Book means something else. Then when we combine the two, they give us text book. Then if you can check blood and stream, blood is something else, stream is something else. But then if we combine the two, we have blood stream. And then if you check book and case, Combining the two, they will, they will give us bookcase. And this final answer is something different from what we have in these two. So here we're talking, we're just saying that in the uh, compounding, we're actually having to combine the two ways that have our, their, own, uh, their own meaning in order for us to have a new meaning or one meaning, one word that is have its own meaning. I believe it makes sense, and uh, I will be taking I will be checking questions in the uh, message box for those who need clarity before we can move on. Because it's fair for us to make sure that we cover everything before we dismiss at last. So by now, those who have questions can open their mic to ask, or you can just uh, ask here. So for now, I have a question from from. Uh, to say is it safe to say that borrowing is the same as neologism mm, uh, no it's not the same it's not the same because in neologism we are borrowing words and those we say for example uh brook Brook is there in Afrikaans and also in uh, our own home languages, which is Shitsonga, uh, Speri, Wuroho, something like that. But then this is slightly different from neologism. So in borrowing, borrowing was just writing the, the, the very same word in our own home languages, but then that way it's, it's it will be like uh we just have to change the spellings of the name but the, the sound we like it sound the same everything is the same but then it's just the way we write it and the way we you know i don't know if i kind of make sense i feel like i'm confusing myself also but then this neologism and uh borrowing they are different I know that neologism is the way in which we borrow words from other languages in order for us to make in order for us to make those words our own. Then uh, borrowing also it has something to do with taking words from other languages, and you know we continue using those words when time goes. But then if we don't have our own translation equivalent, then at some point we are no longer going to return those words. So you can relate neologism and borrowing. And it's it's important. This question is very important. And I would like, I would, I would very much appreciate it if you try to um, do research and maybe I will be learning from there because, but, you know, there's different between borrowing and neologism. That one, for sure, I know that there's different because neologism will be checking at some points some other words so okay thanks for rescuing rescuing me my colleague my colleague says that neologism deals with creating new words that might be used in replacement of uh, a borrowed word correct for example the word um okay very very again Fla, fla. Is in, is in, okay let me try to explain it okay um this question was placed by is it who is it maluleke Malulege, are you there? I think she's, li I think she's listening because she just uh, replied there. Um, Malulege, can you hear me? Malulege. Yes, I can hear you. 
Okay. What's what's your home language? It's Chitonga, I believe. Chitonga. Okay, by the way, let me just try to explain. The example that I've actually just given here it is in Northern Sutine, but let me just try to explain uh, what, what is it like. Neologism, it has to do with the invention of new ways. Like what my colleague has just explained is actually, uh, he has been speaking about borrowing. Eh? Borrowing is whereby um, in our, let's say in our home language, we don't have a way thing like let's say the um the word what uh clinic ne? like meaning in our culture we didn't we didn't we didn't know anything about something that is called a clinic okay let, let me just give you an example with a fly machine like we didn't know what what exactly a fly machine is so when this thing was was introduced to us we asked like what is the name of this thing and then they pronounce this is a fly a fly machine meaning a machine that flies you get it ne? so by borrowing okay. somehow borrowing you can hear like okay let me try to pronounce the way that it has been borrowed in sepedi we are going to say is fly machine so like listen to this uh borrowed with fly machine and fly machine you can hear that somehow even though the sound are not exactly the same but somehow there is the kind of like little uh sound a little bit um the same which means is a good way ne? so what happened is that when it comes to neologism is what we are saying this borrowed weight that we have created which is fly machine we want to remove it like and come up with um like a new way we, not, we want to invent a new way that may not may not actually sound like um it's actually borrowed weight like meaning the way that we are going to create is not going to sound like a fly machine that's why um in neologism we are going to say in Sebedi, they call it sephofan. You can hear that sephofan and flame machine that are totally different. But all in all, what I'm trying to say that is that neologism is all about the invention of new ways. I hope that you are answered. Malule, are you answered? Yes, sir, I understand. You are answered. Okay, you can, yes, sir. Okay, no, thanks. You can proceed, colleague. Okay, colleague. Um, thank you for that, colleague. You really came to my rescue because um, I'm willing to, to clearly explain it, but um, in terms of neologism, that for sure that we know that in neologism, we're creating new words on our, like you are using our own languages to create the, new, the words that are coming from other languages. So say, for example, what my colleague said that, um, in uh, a, like uh, an example of an aeroplane whereby we can say in Sipedi that it's a what it's sifufani it means that we just converted the name to our own language but then you know we can have a translation equivalent so that is what we call neologism then um, another example the very same aeroplane in another language say for example shitonga they can say uh, something like that so we can say that it's a word that is not the verse it, it it doesn't uh, sound the same from the from where we took the word but then we have our own meaning and our own explanation uh, our own uh the, the we, we've you know created and you know we created a new word so in borrowing we're writing that the very same word we're writing it the way it is but then we, we, we will be using our own languages just like um uh, and then the original word is clinic then in our own languages we can say clinic because we don't have another way to you know to um uh, to translate to so i believe that question is answered then we can move on so those who will be having questions um will be leaving their questions in the message box then my colleague will clarify it or i can clarify it if i have a, an answer to it so let's let's move on we talked about the compounding whereby we, we were giving examples to which that uh, by compounding we are adding two ways and by so doing we have air and plane then it gives us a plane something like that and i believe you do understand them so we can move on to 
uh, to acronyms. Or let me try to just uh, go through these ones. So we're saying in a small number of uh, cases, the meaning of compound uh, does not follow meanings of its parts. That one I did explain it to say some of the ways that we actually have to combine, they do not have the same meaning, but then after combining the word, it will be having a final meaning to which we can say an airplane if we added air and we have add a plane and those two they don't have the similar uh, meaning air and plane but then after having to combine them then we'll be having only one way that is having a particular meaning to that so i believe that one you understand it another example here say for example with green bottle so a green bottle is not a type of a bottle a type of a bottle you know like a green bottle it's not just green bottle but then we're talking about uh, a what we're talking about a fly which is called a, a green bottle it have is different it have a final different meaning which is have to do with flies not just a bottle that we know then um we're talking about sugar daddy that we know that sugar daddy is not a type of sugar but a woman's lover who is uh, deemed to be both over genius and um, much too old for her. So it means that sugar deity is someone, is a man who is way older than a particular woman. Then that that man is will be the one that, that will be dating that person. So it have a different meaning from sugar and all those kind of things. But if you can check at some point, the final word, it have a meaning. It have something to do with what you are trying to say. Let's say, for example, here when we say sugar daddy, and then daddy, if you can check daddy, it have some kind of particular meaning of what are we actually talking about, which is daddy. It talks about someone who is way more older than us. Then if you can check green bottle, then bottle, you can say we can check that that fly, you know, maybe it have those kind of, you know, that shape. I don't know that shape of a bottle. Maybe if we can check, if we can talk uh, focus to that one so um let's try to move on so we say that in most in most cases compounding identifies the general class to which the meaning of entire word belongs to i've been trying to explain it there uh, for for example with uh, dog food and then it is a type of food caveman is a type of a man so if you can focus on the last words the last word can be able to can you know help us to identify what exactly are we talking about can give us a hint on what is really happening so yeah it's i believe it makes sense the way i'm explaining it and if i fail to explain it the way you feel like you do understand i believe my colleague will be finding another way of explaining it but then having to uh combine two words it means that we combine words and the last one, it has the meaning or it gives us an idea of what we're talking about. I believe by now it makes sense. And uh, now we are moving on to acronyms. We have um, um, acronyms to which some of you, some of us, we use acronyms the way and, and like we, we forget to, 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 to understand how to use our acronyms we have different examples of the acronyms that we use say for example we have unisa that acronym it feels like a word that makes its own sense but then at some point it's just an acronym that have um to be you know defined they are there are so many ways that falls under unisa we have different acronyms like atm it feels very 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 normal as if like it's a normal word that we talk about every day but only to find out that it's just an acronym and it needs to be defined just like that so okay we're saying that acronyms are ways that are formed by initial letters of set of words and read as a word so this type of formation is especially common in names of organization and scientific technology. So you need to be in a position to define the acronym. If they say, say for example, you are writing a test, you need to be in a position to define this uh, definition and you need to be in a position to know what are the acronyms that you're talking about. So we have UNICEF, 
to which uh, it's United Nations International Children Emergency Fund. We have NATO, which is uh, North Atlantic, blah, blah. We have all these acronyms, AIDS. I talked about these acronyms to say, at some point, we tend to use these acronyms as a normal word, only to find out that we need to be in a position to know what is actually a meaning of that acronym that we have. A CD, it's a compact disc, SASCO, South African Student Organization Congress, um, and so on and so on. So now we're saying that new names for organ, organ, for organization are often designed to have their own acronym represented and appropriate them, uh, appropriate term such as uh, MED, and then we have, which is called uh, Mother Against Drunk Driving, and then WAR, which is uh, Women Against Rape. Some new acronym come into general use so quickly that uh, many speakers do not think of the uh, uh, component meaning. I talked about this one. We tend not to know what is the uh, meaning of that acronym just because we feel like that name is just a normal word that we know. An example of it, it's a ATM, which is called an automatic teller machine. Myself included, I didn't know what does ATM mean. I mean, I thought ATM is something that is, you know, it's a word that is given to that thing that we are using to withdraw money, only to find out that it's just an acronym. It is having its own definition and its meaning. So we have PIN, um, you know, so which is, uh, it represents a personal identification number. So look at this, uh, look at this uh, sentence here to say, sometimes people use the acronym in a wrong manner. Say, for example, I forgot my PIN number. It is not accepted. So at some point, we, we and even if we know that PIN, it, it's called a personal identification number, we're still going to say it's a PIN number. That one we know, and we're still going to say it. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. We're going to use it. We're going to say it's a PIN number. I need my PIN number. Forgot my PIN number, something like that, which is not accepted. But then what can we say? Because it is what it is. <laughs> Okay, so uh, moving on, let me try to check the um, the question box before we can move on, so we can cover some questions if we have those with questions. Uh, okay, we don't have questions. So so far, do we have those who have uh, who need clarity in terms of what we did? We did compounding. We did um, acronyms. We also did the um, borrowing. Do we have those who have questions or you are sorted? Can we proceed? Listening. All right. It means that we can proceed. Thanks, Mabiti. So let's proceed to the clipping. Okay, we were talking about blending. So we have blending. So blending is a process whereby the beginning of a word is combined with the end of the last word to form a new word. So here, you remember when we talked about the suffix and the affix, but um, okay, it's a suffix and prefix to which it's slightly different, but then we're talking about having to take a part of the first word and the other part of the last word in order for us to make a new word. So it's called blending. So we have uh, an example of a branch from breakfast plus lunch. So it means that we um, we took a break, brr, the first one, which is br, and then we have uh, the other one, which is anch, the last one. Then these ones they gave they gave us what branch let me try to um, accept someone so by so doing by blending we think that we are focusing on the first the initial words and the last one so we are taking the first um the first words and the last one in order for us to create a new word so by so doing we have managed to create a new word which is branch from breakfast and lunch so by so doing these uh ways that are in red are the ones that we have borrowed we just 
blend, blended them in order for us to make a new word. So we have another one, which is Gasol. So um, uh, in here, we actually used two words, which is gasoline and alcohol, to which we uh, managed to form a new word, which is gasol. So we took the first words. All right. We took this one in red. And then we here, we managed to, to take the last one, which is ohol. Then it gave us gasol, just like that. So this process... I'm sorry. So these processes are, are very much important for us to know, like, to be in a position to use them because at some point we'll be, um, we'll be having different types of weight formations. And the, we, we talked about that, that weight formation is going to continue and it's going to be used. So people like you who are doing linguistics, who are linguists, then you'll be focusing on the issue of having to create new words and having to continue creating uh, ways that we've never encountered before due to the issue of, you know, technology that is continuously being, um, uh, continuously taking place. And those ways that we feel like we don't, we, we don't have a, a definition for it and all those kind of things so we will be taking some words from another word borrowing from there and there and all these kind of things so you need to be in a position to know what are you doing are you blending this word are you borrowing this word are you clipping it or and so on and so on so i believe the part of blending it's very much clear you do understand it how do we um create a new word from blending it's when we cut a first word uh, first uh, word from the um, from a stem. Let's say let's talk about the the word root from the uh, from the stem. We we were taking the first part and the last part, which is um, we can just you know try to um, to check the issue of the prefix and the suffix. But I'm I'm just trying to refer the two to which we're talking about the first words and the last word. So in order for us to make a new word. So I believe this part is, um, you do understand it. So we have other type, we have these other examples where we have maize from smoke and haze. We have a uh, motel from motor and hotel. So uh, the examples were given on here, whereby we take the first word and the last word. So I believe it makes sense. And you need to go through different types of um, types of examples because they will be needed when you you will be writing your test or maybe when you'll be writing your ex your examination so we have clipping clipping i believe those who who love to you know those uh youtubers and all those kind of people they they love to clip videos you know different clips you know having to cut a long video or even to cut something which is long to make it short. So in order for for us to to uh, to define this one, we can say clipping is a process whereby a word or more than one syllable is uh, reduced to a shorter form. Then we have this uh, different examples whereby we have a fix a mile to reduce it to a fix, we have gasoline to reduce it to gas, uh, advertisement is being reduced to ad, uh, brazer reduced to bra, uh, influencer to re is being reduced to flow, and so on and so on. So this is how we clip words. Like we are using, um, we are actually having to reduce those um, words that have more than one syllable to make it a, a, a to reduce it to to a shorter form. And I believe you know what is a syllable. What is a syllable? and it's going to be a topic for another day and it falls under henna so we're not uh talking more about henna but i believe you understand what's happening here and uh these are more examples that we have and by so doing i believe that um for today and the part of morphology it's uh concluded and um i think my colleague will be having a lot to say so we'll be taking questions all right. Uh, 
So guys, uh, my colleague is saying that those who have just joined us, may you please send your details, send them and initials, student number uh, right here on Google Meet. Note, if you have already sent your details, please do, do not resend them. Uh, please, 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 we beg you, if you didn't enlist your name, do it now so we can use those names to um, uh, to write a report to our official uh, our officials and okay another thing that we have we have a question from Tavelo to say please explain blenching for me all right let me go back to the blenching the part of blenching Okay, and so we're saying that blending is when we is the process of uh, is the process whereby the beginning of a word is combined with the end of the last word to form a new word. So, say for example, we have um, two words. Then those two words, we take the first word, we take the only uh, prefix the first part of the word and the second word we take the last part of that word then we combine those pieces that we took from those two words to create a new word that is what we call blending so to check the examples that we have the first example we have branch so branchy is the word that is taken from two words which is breakfast and lunch then those uh, prefix are written in what the prefix and suffix that we took from two different uh, words is these ones which are in red colors we have the first one which is pre and the last one which is anch they after combining those two words that we took from two words then we managed to create what branch so okay let me try to do this equal to uh branch so having to take the first way the first prefix and the last suffix of the two of two different words we've managed to create a new final word which is branch then we have two words here which is gasoline and alcohol so these two words we did like this we took the first part of gas then which is uh guess then alcohol we took another part of which is the suffix of the second part which is all alcohol then we have what gaso with a uh, gaso just like this so i don't know if you do understand how i explain it but the most important thing is to be in a position to know that we'll be having two words those two words, the first word that we focus on, the first word we focus only on the prefix. And the second word we focus only on the suffix of the word. So we cut the prefix on the first word, then we cut the suffix on the second word. Then we combine the two. Then by combining those two words, then we'll be having a newly formed word that is called gasol. Let's say, for example, for the, the example number two, then here we had first word which is smoke and the second word which is fog then the first word we focus only on prefix which is small uh okay sm and the last one the last word we focus only on the suffix which is og to give us smog then it's going to be equal to smog just like this so this is what we call blending it's like focusing on those things that i explained them and then they will be giving us a final result i don't know if uh, you do understand so let me check if we have another question uh, okay Nsovelo, may you please open your mic do you understand because we cannot move on if you don't understand we need you to we need to make sure that whatever that we explain we understand by the way we are just um revising what you did with your lecture do you understand Sovelo? 
Yeah, and I'm two seasons still. Okay, that's that's okay. That's 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 okay. So, okay, now, uh, my colleague is giving another example of uh, blending. So he's saying that blending combine blending is combining the beginning of the word with the end of another word to form a new word. It's very much clear by that way. So example of it, it's hotel and motto, which is uh, we are going to have hot at the first and the second one will be having tell. Then they will be giving us what more uh, hot uh, motel. And I believe it makes sense. And thanks for the question, Sovelo. Then who else is having a question? Colleague, if if possible, can you please uh, take screenshots of the um, of people who are writing their details so that we can write write them down. Uh, please try to take some screenshots there, or maybe you can write them down if possible. Colleague, if you hear me, can you hear me? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm I'm busy, colleague. I'm busy like taking some screenshots here. Okay, it's okay. Thank you. So, do we have those? Do we have others who have questions? Let's now we are just recapping from whatever that we did from the beginning. We talked about the uh, the topic on its own, which is morphology. We talked about the um affixes, prefixes. We talked about the um the uh free morphemes, the compound morphemes. We talked about the word formations to which we finally. Uh, we do, we're talking about the word formations at the moment. So recapping from whatever that we did with my colleague in um, uh, last session up until today to our uh, recent session, do we have those who still need clarity, those who still want to um, ask questions? Because I, I believe we're not going to talk about morphology from now on. We'll be focusing on the new topics um so if you still have questions please feel free to ask them now so we can move on and please take note that that question is going to help uh not only yourself but then it's going to help uh, other people who are not uh, in a good position to ask those questions so please keep those questions coming so we can clarify them my colleague is here to clarify some of the things if you feel like you don't understand them Okay, so we're saying that uh, where can I find this recording? The recording is going to be forwarded in the group. I don't know if it's going to be um, good enough, but then it's going to be uh, forwarded in the group. Okay, uh, let me try to stop it because I, I feel like we are no longer talking more about